You don't know shit about security, so it's going to be a yeah, stretch. I don't know. I had to fake it till I make it. There you go, but That wasn't very nice, Brian. I know. He's not mad at me. He's mad at himself. He just takes it out on me. He's projecting. Whatever you Hello, my friends. Thank you for joining us for the PebCAC podcast. Hope the information security show featuring some all-around good people. It is week 27 of 2023, and I'm still waiting for summer to start here in California. Happy Independence Day to all our American listeners to commemorate the day when the colonists said no taxation without representation. With me, I have my co-host, the Cloud God, who doesn't pay his taxes because he believes they are unconstitutional. The only thing I think is unconstitutional is your opening here. You're trying to get me in trouble, man. Just in case the IRS is listening. Since when did you get so sensitive, Brian? <laughs> Since there's 87,000 new IRS agents that Chris is trying to sick on me. <laughs> is that the new swatting, basically? <laughs> Can I audit you? It's too funny. That's right. If I go down, you go down, Chris. So It's true. Mutual it's true. shared dis- destruction. We're in this together. And we have Glenn Medina, who's dumping packages of tea in his pool this week. That's right, because it's a nice and warm 86 degrees in the pool right now. Like, this is awesome, Ugh, awesome gross. weather. Feels so great. No guests this week, but we do have one scheduled for next week, so be sure to tune in. Combined, we have decades of information security experience here, not just to educate, but to entertain. We've got four awesome stories for you this week, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. This week, we're going to talk about common text message scams, Apple's new privacy and security protections. For our third topic, we have a new mobile phone operating system, and close with TikTok. Two quick items I want to mention. I hate TikTok. TikTok. Yeah, TikTok. The, The app that does the stupid dances. You may have to spell this one out, Chris. <laughs> Tick- Everyone knows t- he's saying TikTok. TikTok. Hyundai. <laughs> Hyundai. <laughs> Hyundai. <laughs> oh, my All right. gosh. All right, let's move it on. I think our listeners want, want to move on here. <laughs> Two quick items I want to mention before we get started with our first story. The first one is I was in a meeting with a client this week, and we ordered lunch and had a working meeting. I got a chicken sandwich with bacon, and when I went looking for it, I saw my client had accidentally grabbed it and started eating it. We ordered the same sandwich, but mine had bacon in it, and his did not. He was very apologetic about it, but he did make the comment, this is going into the podcast, isn't it? So here it is. My client stole my chicken sandwich with bacon. At least he didn't try to just take it out, take the bacon out and just give it to you. Yeah. Would that be That's poor true. form as well? <laughs> the other piece of news, just real quick, the Solar Winds executives got hit with a Wells notice from the US SEC, and that means they may get fined or banned from serving as officers or directors of other companies. So we're actually seeing some kind of enforcement action over this solar winds breach. That happened like a decade ago, or at least it feels like it. Twenty twenty three years. Man. They're still around. Oh my gosh, they are. I'm surprised they haven't rebranded. Like all those companies that had terrible PR, and then their name was synonymous with disaster, and they end up rebranding themselves. I'm surprised Solar Winds hasn't rebranded yet. Yeah, like what, what, Solar Flare Winds. Nobody would ever. Yeah. Or call it Moonlight instead of Solar. Just Moon. Go go the opposite way. Lunar Winds. Yeah. <laughs> Lunar Winds. Oh. Hey, you know what would be an awesome fu is if they went and they're like we're gonna call ourselves. Wells wins because the Wells, <laughs> the Wells notice. notice, yeah, yeah, and then it's a play because like wins or wins, and then they'll be on the podcast talking about it later. Yeah, we'll stay tuned on that one. For our first topic, U.S. consumers lost three hundred and thirty million dollars from text message based scams in twenty twenty two, according to the U.S. Federal Trade Commission. Hey, Chris. Did you hear yeah. that we also lost $6.2 billion on accident by sending it to Ukraine? Yes, we I did. I think you should be a little bit more upset about that. That's our <laughs> Tax- taxpayer money, baby. Taxpayers lost out on that as well. We accidentally yeah. sent $6.2 billion? What do we... I'm 
must be yeah. living under a rock. That's just terrible. Yes, it's a it rounding is. error. That's so much money. Like, if you are... That's how we know we pay too much in taxes. So maybe <laughs> they are unconstitutional. If you're sending money over there, and we haven't stopped homelessness in, our, in not to say just Arizona, but in the United States, or taking care of our vets, then I don't know what is actually yes. going on. The world's fake. Six point well, two billion, and no one, no one even noticed. Is that really taxpayer dollars, or is that just more debt for the for the country? Both. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, actually a, Glenn, you make your <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's all imaginary money at this point. Yeah, right, this way, what's the difference? Let's not sink this conversation anymore. Let's get back on topic here. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. The U.S. Federal Trade Commission notes that the speed of text messaging does not allow you to slow down and think about things before you act, and thieves are taking full advantage of that. A random sample of 1,000 text message scams were analyzed, and here are the top offenders. Number one, text messages impersonating your bank with a fake fraud alert. If you respond to the message, someone will call you and steal your login credentials. The average loss for this type of scam is about $3,000. And that's when you get an alert that says, hey, did you just spend $2,000 on Southwest Airline tickets? And then you, of course, you say, no, I did not. And then they'll call you and say, oh, well... It seems there's something wrong with your account. Let me check it out for you. Give me your login and give me your password. Give me the 2FA code that you'll get, and I'll fix this right away. And that's how they get into your bank account and steal your money. So the first red flag is there is no Southwest Airlines flight that would ever cost $3,000. They'll do international? Not Uh, even international. Uh, No, they fly into Cancun. So that's Cancun, Cabo, Hawaii is probably their furthest hop. But try hey, Hawaii, try Hawaii. Is a US state. Yeah. Try Hawaii in the middle of summer. I bet I can rack up three thousand dollars worth of airline tickets there. Well my daughter just bought tickets round trip to Maui, I believe, for like two hundred and eighteen bucks. That's a good deal. For September though, I think. Yeah, September. Yeah. Well, I guess we should qualify that. One ticket will not cost you three thousand dollars, but several tickets will yeah, would. I bet right? A family of six can. The second most common type of text message scam, free stuff giveaway. Text messages telling about you that you've won a free iPhone from T-Mobile or a Yeti cooler. All you have to do is click this link and pay for the shipping fee. Number one, you're never going to get your money back. Number two, you'll never get the cooler or the iPhone. And number three, they now have your credit card information. Dang it, I had a whole bunch of beer ready just to put in that cooler. Side note, I hear Yeti coolers are pretty awesome that they are worth the money i had a buddy of mine in florida and he he brought it he filled it up with ice like on a monday and we kept it closed and just opened it to pull out drinks and and by friday like the ice was still in the cooler like they insulate really really well they do i i I love mine but there's a lot i mean the technology has come a long way i mean they're heavy they're big thick walled and i guess if you bring build a yeti heavy enough and thick enough then it will hold ice for several days. I mean, but I'm sure there's other coolers that do exactly the same for pretty lower uh, price point because these things are pretty expensive. That's true. It's probably not patented. They're just popular. And number three, the most of uh, the most common text metric scams, fake package delivery scams. Similar to the free stuff scam, these scammers ask you to pay a re-delivery fee or they'll send the package back. These are just all tricks to get your credit card information and more personal details, such as your address and social security number. You know, the one I've been hit with more than not lately is the the Netflix one. Like, hey, your Netflix payment has expired or something. They want you to click here to update your billing information. Yeah. Yep. I know the, the fake package delivery ones have been making its rounds. I've gotten quite a few this month and then on our company collaboration tool people have been complaining about it there as well so i think i don't know why this a, a sudden resurgence of these fake package delivery scams in particular people are short memory people have short memory so yeah must be the last text message based scam i want to call out it was not included in the ftc report but i want our listeners to be aware of it it's called pig butchering 
and we talked about it before when the FBI released their IC3 report, but pig butchering scams start with a random text message like hello or I'll be in town next week, let's meet up. And if you reply, they'll start a conversation apologizing for getting the wrong number, but you sound like a cool person, so why not start a conversation? Inevitably, the other person will start sending stock photos of people with expensive cars and luxury goods and tell you they got rich by investing in this crypto company or some other scam, and they'll say, you can be rich too if you invest. You can guess where this Wait is going. Wait a second. You will lose all, all my your money. friends do this to me. <laughs> Who's is that, that Chris? Like when, I, when I tell you to buy Chris Bitcoin, Brian? Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I have so many new friends lately, and they're all... It all starts with the, by accident. This woman to send them money in a brown paper bag. Buy crypto. Buy crypto. I've seen that one a lot too. It's getting Joking out of hand. Aside. There's there's no real way to fix this that, that we know. We I mean we talked about it before. If we can get some kind of verified check mark on actual Wells Fargo, actual Bank of America then that they'll be less likely but you know you're gonna have to have a phone that supports that and you know grandma's flip phone isn't gonna be able to read a blue check mark grandma doesn't have a flip phone anymore she's got a giant ipad that she takes everywhere hey but i showed you american airlines had the the blue check yes text message that was way better than hanging out for 45 minutes waiting for them to call back on the phone yeah sorry to say brian you're you're talking with chat gpt it wasn't a real person that's right. No, this is definitely a real person. Did you ask him what they're wearing that day? Yes, I said, "Is this ChatGPT?" No, it I was a, it, like you can just tell like it was just an overly difficult thing, and the responses were too, too, too well defined. Really? Because you start with it, and it's just like you're like a oh, stupid automated system system like hey i you know i need to uh, rebook this flight but it won't let me because it's an international flight and it's like well here click on this thing to change your flight i'm like mother effer i told you i can't change my flight they're like are you sure you want to try changing your flight i'm like yes try clicking <laughs> this link i'm like oh my god and you just start writing agent 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 and then eventually get somebody so i've heard that where you write agent or operator in the chat to get a live person i've also heard swearing and cursing at the the robot will actually send it to a person because it seems you're very angry and irate and they want to get you to a real person right away. So that's another tip Should if agent doesn't work. Pull out something. Yeah, pull out something from like Short Circuit. Remember that movie? No. Oh, that's oh. an old movie. Hey, Laser Lips, your mother was a snowblower. You guys don't remember that movie? That was a great movie, man. I wonder if they sure, would pick up on that. It was the precursor to Wally, right? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, that, I thought that. Remember, it's yeah. like Los Locos kick your balls, Los Locos kick your face, <laughs> Los Locos kick your ass into outer space, and he comes back, he's all spray painted and everything. <laughs> well, I'll have to add that one to the watch, watch list. The, the things you remember, that's awesome. <laughs> Just uh, keep that song in there because it is. It's like Meow Mix, like it's a it's a legend. You guys don't know it. Just bleep out the the a word for for the listeners. Will do, Brian. Anyways, this is our reminder for our listeners out there to stay vigilant. Tell your loved ones. Most of our listeners are far too smart to fall for a text message scam like this, but we all know people that are not listeners. So either tell them to listen to the podcast or let them know that that message from your bank is probably not actually from your bank. Except for that one guy that took your bacon sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> He's not smart enough. He this might fall for the this text kidding. message scam. No, he's he's a good guy. He felt really bad, <laughs> oh, he totally though, genuinely. Well, we can't just bust his balls at the beginning of the show. We got to do all the way through. Oh, that's a, that's that way right. I know if he's listening. Yeah, that's true. We'll, we and it, and it shouldn't just be one. Shouldn't be just one chicken sandwich. It should at least be like two or three, or a, you know, a month's worth or something like that. <laughs> I mean, a real man would give you a Chick Fil A gift card and force yeah. him to open up on Sunday. That's yeah. right. Chris looks act- visibly uncomfortable with this conversation right now. <laughs> it's because it's first, not our customer. <laughs> my first yeah. act as president, if I'm ever elected, Chick-fil-A opens on Sunday. There you go. Yeah, so you, I guess to, used to tell my kids, you can have all the Chick-fil-A you want on Sunday. 
That's like the the joke. Yeah, Joe. Free Too uh, soon. free oil changes for Teslas. <laughs> and, and gas. <laughs> All right. For our second topic, our favorite privacy centric phone maker announced a new and powerful privacy and security feature set for the iPhone coming in iOS 17, due to be released with the new iPhone in September. We'll highlight a few of the key new features coming soon. Safari private browsing now locks when not in use and requires a password, touch ID, or face ID to view. Hey, let me ask you about private browsing. Does anyone use private browsing outside of trying to like book cheap tickets or like when, when trying to do your travel? No, that's all I use it for. I use it, I, I use it for that, or since I use Brave, a lot of the privacy features break some sites and then i'll have to at least test it out in incognito mode to see if it is the brave browser that's that's breaking things for my research i use quantum i don't use the in private browsing surprised you don't use the island browser for your research glenn (laughs) no because that's still a log somewhere so yeah research is always on on uh on on uh was that uh, it's not it's not brave it's the quantum focus I like that one because it's simple and it only opens one page they can't open additional pages or no it's got automatic kill on on adware and everything else it doesn't consume eight gigs of RAM like yeah. Chrome. <laughs> per tab per tab per tab per tab yeah one call out I want to make is for the current iOS 16 they recent the recently deleted and hidden folders on the iPhone photo app now require face ID previously it did not which made no sense to me because if you want to hide something uh, you probably don't want other people looking at it so it makes sense to hide it behind face ID hey, when we get tracking. together for black hat let's let's go through our stuff let's all, let's open up the hidden folder and see what's in there guys <laughs> I showed you one of them last time and then you didn't like what I showed you, so I don't know if you want to go down that route. Oh, you and your stuff it, videos. It was pictures of bunnies, <laughs> that's why, and it had Brian Hall upset. Yeah, he's like, yeah, this I'm going to spike this thing like a football. That's what he always says. <laughs> Link tracking protection in messages, mail, and Safari private browsing for when Glenn and Brian forget to remove the question mark UTM BS at the end of the link before they share it in the group chat. Like I said, I'll start removing that when you take your your mask off in public. (laughs) Photo and video sharing protection that warns a minor before sending or receiving what the device believes to be a photo containing nudity. The neural engines on the devices have become so powerful they can do on-device processing and the media never leaves the device for analysis. And that's, that's a huge difference because Facebook requires you to upload the photo to their server before they can analyze it or block it. Apple can do it on device. Do you ever remember, like, so that works out great, but, like, Theo Vaughn has a story about his friend that was, like, really chunky, and he's like, man, this kid had boobs. He's like, I couldn't tell the difference. So do you think if Theo Vaughn had an iPhone back in the day with this feature enabled, and, like, just, like they're just sending over the, bar- the you know, the, the barbecue uh, uh, blowout for the 4th of July and his friend's on there, do you think it would warn them that there was nu- you know, full frontal nudity? Probably. <laughs> it's not no. that it can't, it can't, oh, it doesn't want to assume gender. So yeah, I guess that would work. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The lines have been blurred a little bit, so they're just going to go on, go on the safer route. Uh, sensitive photo warnings. Link to that video. Yeah. Sensitive photo warnings. When Brian sends us inappropriate pictures in the group chat, FaceTime or airdrop, it can now be obfuscated or blocked, and it they'll say, "Are you sure you want to look at this?" And then you have to opt in to be able to see it. But how does it know it's sensitive, though? Is it because of the recognition inside that it sees a a, a butt cheek? Yes. Or... See the previous comment, Glenn. Try, Jesus, focus. Yeah, I know, I know. But what happens if I take a picture of like my armpit, and it and it looks like that? Is that does, does it know that it's my armpit versus a butt cheek? Better safe than sorry. We'll, we'll test that out on iOS 17, and uh, it's good that they did it for AirDrop because I think we linked through it before. There's a story about uh, Southwest Airlines flights that some person kept AirDropping uh, the male genitalia to other people on the airplane, and the pilot had to warn and say, I'll turn this plane around unless you stop AirDropping these photos to each other. 
I remember that. Improve, okay. improve lockdown mode. I don't know what that means, but they said they're going to extend lockdown mode to other features of the iPhone that are commonly exploited for what they call mercenary-grade spyware. We know they're all talking about NSO Group's uh, Pegasus spyware. Hey, time out real quick. The only person in the group of the four of us that is ever inappropriate is you, Chris. You're the one that's always trying to send stuff to get us in trouble. <laughs> that's uh, not true. You guys, you guys don't have your share, mean. too. I think t- oh, Todd's no. the only one that doesn't because it makes him uncomfortable. But the two of you are both guilty of this. You and your bros pick. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite new feature is check-in. Probably more apl- applicable with you two since you have driving age kids. Check-in lets a trusted person know your destination and the Maps app will calculate the route and will automatically notify that person when you arrive. If for some reason it's taking longer than expected, it will notify the trusted person with your precise location, battery level, and cell signal strength. So there's always yeah, that. Whatever. You, know, you tell someone, hey, text me when you get home or let me know when you get home safely. Now it can be an automatic feature. Has technology gone too far? When we were kids, it was like, you wake up, you leave the house, or you're doing chores all day, and just be home by the time it's dark. Like that's, and I, my mom had no idea where I was at. I almost died in a mine shaft once, but I would have been okay with that. Well, probably well, more than once. He almost died seeking a penny in a light socket, too. <laughs> no, that was one of those U-shaped nails. I don't think a penny would be conductive. <laughs> yeah. Penny is conductive. I, it just wouldn't fit in that thing. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, I get the idea. I'm at that point now. It's like, do we really need to have all this? I mean, we we survived as as uh, you know as youngsters and played out in the streets all day long. I know I did. I, I didn't come back home until the sun came down. So I don't know about you guys, but then again, I'm about ten years older than you guys. So I was the same way. I grew up where the principal spanked me for being a little a hole. I, I grew up where I think my best friend's mom. I turned 18, so I thought I was cool, and so I tried to say the S-H-I-T word in front of her, and she she slapped me so hard, I saw Jesus' eyes. She's like, you don't cuss in my house. Like, <laughs> I, I thought this like, was going to go in another right, Mrs. direction. I thought Brian was going to say, my my friend's mom was attractive, and I turned 18, and oh boy, it was game on. <laughs> there you Not go, Chris. perverted <laughs> like you, Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> totally a Brian thing to do. <laughs> No, that's totally a Chris thing they do. My story was <laughs> genuine. I'm like, yeah. Mm. Mm. Right. yeah. For our third topic, on the topic of mobile phones, Russian security firm Kaspersky has developed a hack-resistant mobile operating system called Kaspersky OS. It was demonstrated at a business conference earlier this month, and the first version of the OS has a bare bones set of features, like literally bare bones. It can make phone calls, SMS based text messaging, the most insecure form of text messaging available, an address book, and a settings panel. So that's it. That's all you get. What's not included yet? No web browser, no support for a camera, no Wi Fi and no NFC features. They're currently looking at a hardware partner to put their OS on a phone. I'm guessing based on the situation right now in Russia, they're going to have to partner with a Chinese firm like Xiaomi or Huawei to get this crap on one of their devices. (laughs) That's even better. Let's have two companies that we, from two countries that we don't ever trust uh, uh, using a device. uh, That's going to be terrible. This, of course, stems like, from the... I don't know. It's like Rambo and Rocky teaming up. <laughs> Makes them bad the ass. common enemy, yeah. This, of course, stems from the recent allegation from the Russian FSB, without any evidence whatsoever, that Apple was working with the U.S. intelligence community to design zero-day exploits to spy on Russians. The Kremlin already banned iPhones from being used, And it's true that someone was using a highly sophisticated zero-click, zero-day exploit to spy on Kaspersky employees and members of the Russian government. But Apple patched that vulnerability last week with iOS 16.5.1. This vulnerability has been around for almost four years. Chris, do you have trouble saying uh, Kaspersky? Kaspersky. 
Kaspersky. Hyundai. It seems like you're like really trying to <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> it. Oh my god. Hi and die. I'm not, I'm not I'm not trying to bust your balls this time. I'm just curious like if it Kaspersky. All right. It just seems like you're really it's like a, it's like a it's a level of effort into the pronunciation that makes well, me that's, concerned. Well, that's the Asian side of us, right? That you don't have to deal with, uh, Brian. Like, when I say Tesla, you, you don't know upset. I'm Asian. <laughs> <laughs> or I watch. I watch Salmon versus Salmon. So, yeah. I it's watch? I don't understand that one. Yeah, because I say I watch. It's just a watch. It's the Apple it's watch. Apple watch. The it's Apple watch. I watch. There's no such yeah. thing as an I watch. Yeah. Oh god, Glenn. That's more. I don't think it's Asian. I think it's more like you're almost like a hundred years old. <laughs> <laughs> the memory's starting to fade. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate that, Brian. <laughs> you're welcome, sweetheart. Yeah, so, a Russian OS honestly, on a Chinese phone. I like phone. this phone. What can I go like wrong? It. You would buy it. You're such a liar. You wouldn't use it. I would. I need something that is just dumb. I don't want anything. Like in a perfect world, I don't leave a five mile radius of my house. Like this would be ideal because I don't need maps. I don't need to be answering emails or checking calendar or anything like that. If you really need to get a hold of me, just pick up the phone call. God forbid you text me. I might. That's, that's me at 55. Text. You've defined me at 55. Like I don't need to get a hold of you. I, I, I mean, you don't need to get a hold of me. I'll call you when I want to call you. It's like Kaspersky. Exactly. Congratulations. You just Kaspersky. invented a flip phone. It's unhackable because no one cares to hack it. Yeah. So, all right. Is it unhackable? Because, or why is it hack resistant? Because right now it just seems like there's, there's just no features. <laughs> like, or is it, or is there like a, a tiny little uh, Russian inside the phone that is openly trying to combat attacks against it? Yeah. It's just uh, a Russian guy in like an Adidas tracksuit with an AK guarding the, guarding the, the colonel in copious amounts of cologne <laughs> dracar noir oh, <laughs> well, I, I think that that is step one completely minimizing the attack surface that iphones are pretty secure but they're hackable because they have to support so many things like nso found an exploit in some kind of pdf converter that's built into the phone and you know, if the phone has to support PDFs, then it has to have this interpreter. This interpreter is subject to attack. Same with HomeKit. There's a vulnerability in HomeKit. You want to do home Let's... automation with your iPhone, but that that's the whole purpose of lockdown mode is lockdown mode is to turn off all that unnecessary yeah. stuff. Well, that's software, right? I mean, whenever you had like dedicated phones, the, the phones of the day, it just had a dialing system and that was it. And then they added text or SMS and that opened it up a little bit more from, for, from a from a software standpoint, but when you've got, you know, transistors and whatnot dedicated to just dialing numbers, it's pretty unhackable at that point. You guys uh, remember Silent Circle? Silent the, Circle. The, the founder of Silent Circle came to talk at our SKO once. They invented a phone called the Black Phone, and it was a, it was an Android device, but it had segregated spaces, so you just swipe, and I'm in my work mode, and I swipe, and then I'm in my personal mode, and the thought was you can really lock down the corporate side so I can't install dating apps on the corporate side. And the corporate side can't spy on my personal photos because my personal photos are in the personal side container. That was an attempt, I think, to make maybe not an unhackable phone, but a lot more privacy-centric. And, and again, they removed all unnecessary libraries and reduced the attack surface that way. I think they just make software now. They stopped making those phones. But the guy came and, and he held up his iPhone. He says, this thing is 100 times more secure than the most secure Android device. But for companies that want to use Android or have this use case of personal spaces, then the black phone was the way to go. That's not much to say against Android, to be honest. I, I still find that odd that Russia and China would want that phone simply because they're the biggest... Uh, my, in my opinion, right, they're big on just spying on their own people to begin with. Yeah, right? at, at some point they're going to ask Eugene Kaspersky to insert a backdoor. <laughs> yeah, if if it's not in there already, right, and that's why I think it's it's kind of odd that 
Kaspersky OS would would have would would be sellable because everyone knows or has seen the fact that there's this backdoor problem that they've that they've initiated from from history. But then you have to think of the target. The target mark for Kaspersky OS is not Yumi and Brian. It's the Russian government. It's people inside of Russia where Russia can say no more iPhone. Well, there should be no more iPhone anyway, because Apple's part of embargoed from selling the things there, but it, it's for their own market. This is, I don't think anyone outside of Russia would ever buy a Kaspersky OS phone other than to poke fun at it. So wait, Apple can't be sold in Russia. Yeah, it's embargoed. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. there's All gotta be sanctions. a secondary market where you just FedExing a bunch of them over there black market for uh for iphones don't you think well, i'm sure there is but you know can your average russian afford a iphone to begin with and then to pay the premium to get it smuggled in and then well, they, yeah they're rich over there aren't they break they international the sanctions yeah it ain't the average <laughs> so yeah would you guys buy one just to reverse engineer it or play around with it probably buy one put it in a sock and then hit a Russian with it. Fair, fair. <laughs> I just got that. <laughs> What's that thing called? It's called a bolo when you put something heavy in a sock and you whack someone with it. Yeah. With a, typically a rock or something. Or a yeah. bar of soap. Yeah. Some change. Yeah. yeah. Like if you if you ever get a hold of this thing, you gotta build like a Faraday cage in case there's some built in cell antenna floating home to Mother Russia. Oh, you know it is. There's not if, it's it's you know there is. All right, for our last topic, it will be a rotating topic every week. <clears throat> this week, we're going to talk about tipping culture, particularly here in America. Like tipping cows? Like, have you guys ever done that? It's so fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh to save the month. Damn, America. I'm going to keep singing as you talk through this. You can just Alrighty. put me in the background. <laughs> for great. our international listeners, we can give a quick rundown on what tipping is and is not. In the U.S., if you eat in a restaurant and someone serves you, you're expected to leave at least a 15% tip on top of the cost of the meal. The 15% is usually given to the server or pooled for all the servers, the hosts or the hostess, the cooks, the bus people, and anyone who worked to get you your meal. And this number actually changed. In, during the 1950s here in the U.S., people commonly tipped 10% all the time. In the 70s and 80s, that percentage moved to 15%. And today in 2023, the expected tip is anywhere between 15 and 25%. One of the reasons tips even exist in the U.S., so many people might not know this, in the U.S., that part of U.S. labor laws allows restaurants to pay their staff under minimum wage. If the tips they make plus the low wage come out over the minimum wage for that state, then the restaurant is in compliance with U.S. labor laws. So yes, you heard that right. Diners are expected to subsidize the restaurant's wages so they don't have to pay their worker a minimum wage. So let's say, for example, in California, the minimum wage here is $15, and a restaurant could pay a server $2 an hour as long as the tips make up for that $13. So if they make $13 in tips per hour plus the $2 an hour the restaurant pays, they are in compliance with U.S. labor laws. Now you know the background, let's talk about how it's gotten out of control in America. I'll let you two start since I've been talking for a while. So the other day I was coming home from the grocery store and on the side of the road, four o'clock in Arizona, it, it's freaking hot, right? And I, I saw what I, per, I perceived it to be like a lemonade stand. Uh, so I pull up and I'm like, it's like three little girls and a mom. I'm like, Jesus, like 108 outside, like... I can't be that guy. So I walk over or I pull up and get out and they're actually selling like the friendship bracelets. So I'm not their key demographic at all, but I'm like, well, you know, how much is it? They're like uh, $5. I'm like, okay. It's like, do you guys do like Apple pay or something like that? <laughs> Cause they're, Brian yeah. doesn't carry cash. <laughs> yeah. Didn't at this point in time, I didn't have any cash. So I was like, I was like, ah, oh, scoop up like five of them and then, pick him out and then go to do the the square and then she turns it around and it has a suggested tip five ten or fifteen dollars i'm like <laughs> no <"Gotta> way. Be... <laughs> i'm like why is there a suggested tip on this transaction like i 
I give him an, an additional five on top because I'm a good guy. But what the yeah. hell? I, I walk All around, around good that. guy. But they they kind of deserve it, man. It was so hot outside. I can't believe they were doing that. Yeah. yeah. But what what I don't like is when they put in there. Is it a minimum of 20, 25, and 30, like the cabs in Las Vegas? I'm like, yeah, dude, like you just, had a smelly cab. You left the window open at 100 degrees outside. And you are praying on AC drunk on. idiots at that time. Yeah, it's like, no freaking you way. You took a cab in Vegas? Have you not heard of Uber? Yeah, it just takes forever to get Uber over there. From the airport, from the airport. From the airport to the hotel, I always take a cab because those go fast. I kind of do it out of principle. Right. I, I try to avoid cabs because before we got popular and I took a lot of cabs around Las Vegas, like you always have to get a receipt, right, to get reimbursed. And some of these cabs charge like a $3 receipt fee. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> That's like, this is a giant scam. Oh, jeez. And So give us your story since uh, Captain Loudmouth over here had to go take a piss. Just for the edification of our listeners, Glenn left us yet again on topic number four. And it's just the Brian and Chris show. Uh, my, my story is I walked into a donut shop. This is really recent. This is just last week. I walked into a donut shop. No one greeted me. No one was out in front. And there were two, there's just two ordering kiosks. They weren't iPads, but they were like one of those all in one PCs. And after putting my order in the kiosk, I got. Three options to tip, 18, 20, and 22%. So like, are you kidding me? No one greeted me. I'm ordering through a kiosk. And then I hit no tip. And then three minutes later, someone came out, handed me a box of donuts without saying a word, and I just left. And it's like, you expect a tip for not even saying hi. Like I could see giving a tip if they at least greet you. or and say, But there's literally nobody out in front. I'm just ordering through an iPad, or not an iPad, but a kiosk. And... Yeah, that that was an interesting one. Um, the other one is uh, paying admission into an entertainment venue. You pay the cost of admission. Let's say it's twenty bucks a person, and then there's a line for a tip. I'm like, wait, wait, I'm, I'm just paying to get in now, and you still expect a tip on top of the cost of admission? Like, like what's what? What is that for? <laughs> so what what uh, did you do? What kind of were you go to a concert or something? It's like a comedy club. Like a comedy club, you oh, okay. you, you pay to get it i mean like you normally tip the server so once you get in the comedy club you order food you order drinks and you tip on that because that's food and beverage it's service they're yeah. bringing you stuff they're taking your empties away but just to get in just to get in and there's a there's a tip line on that one it's like that's well, it's a it's a little bit out of control well it's pretty common in america if you go to a comedy show that it's like i don't know about tipping to get in but there is a there's always like a two drink minimum as yeah. well so it's kind of like it's like the vig, but uh, on your little donut story, uh, have you ever been to a place called Crumble Cookie? I've heard of them. I've not physically been. I think I've ordered them through DoorDash, but I've never physically been inside one. Yeah, you actually sent me some. That's right. Anyways, yeah. I think their cookies suck. My family likes it, but every once in a while, like we'll we'll walk in, and you can order from, you know, the person at the register, or you can order off the kiosk. And every time you go to the kiosk, it asks for a tip. I'm like, I'm not tipping you, Mister iPad. Like, I understand what's going on right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's... My daughter worked. Oh, go ahead. So there's <clears throat> there was some joke or there's some meme that says, "Yes, I'll give you a 15 percent tip for just pushing a few buttons on the iPad and swiveling it around so I could tip you." <laughs> yeah, I uh, when we were in uh, California, I was doing like a boat rental, and it was just like. Uh, would you like to leave a tip, right? And you're like, and like, and it's percentage based, and you're like renting a boat, so it's it's a lot of money. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And then she's like, all right, I need to run your card again. Um, oh wait, I'm sorry. She she runs the card. She needs the signature. She's like, oh, here, you need to answer this question. I'm like, okay, so in sign, please. And like, you want to leave a tip, but in sign, whatever. She's like, I need to do the deposit in case you damage the boat. I'm like, all right. So she swipes it, and then I fully expect for her to say, you know answer this question and the sign she just skips it i'm like all right like it was not like it's an optional thing you don't have to present you, it to every customer. do you want a tip on top of the damage deposit <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's, so I, there's... I, I... go oh, ahead anyway. chris all right the, the, there's sort of an awkward situation here so there's one restaurant it's it's a really good barbecue place by me and, and when you pay by credit card no, normally they would do the kiosk thing that they either 
print out the receipt, you write it down, or they on the digital ones, you just manually add it. But this place, they take your credit card, they run it, and then they ask you, would you like to leave a tip? And it kind of puts you in an awkward position, like, no, sorry. <laughs> and then if you say yes, yeah. then you have to say how much, and they manually enter it into the, the credit card machine. So I've got a Ooh, couple... I've got a couple comments on this. Sorry, and listening here. The, tip, and I, and I, I've worked in service. Like I was a bartender working through college, and tip stands for time in prompt service, right? So that's what I've yeah. always stood. So there's always some level of communication, some level of customer service. If I've got bad customer service, and I, I make this, I, I typically will tell people. I tell my kids all the time. I start at twenty percent. If this if the service is really crappy or non existent, it starts to fall off from there. Like one one example is if I'm sitting at a restaurant and I and my glass goes empty, you start going down really quick to about fifteen and maybe even twelve percent. Like I will be that mean. But again, if the tip is extraordinary, I, there's it's not uncommon for me to go from twenty to twenty five percent just because I know what it's like to struggle for a tip and how much work it takes to get there. The second thing I have to say is there are some locations like San Jose or San Francisco where they charge a service charge on top of the bill, which I don't know if that's included as part of the tip, but it's kind of a weird thing that I've noticed. I don't know if you guys have seen it as well. Yeah, I think I think it's a forced tip, but then they try to conceal it so they can get get even a higher tip on top of that. And then sometimes they, they tip on the tip too, and they they do things to conceal that and try to make it tricky. Like you really have to pay attention yeah. to, to what they do. Yeah. Really funky. But yeah, I, 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 I agree with you right now. I think it's out of control. I mean, you know, 20% on average on top of everything that you buy. It's, it's, I mean, it's just, it gets, it's, it's out of hand. So, yeah. And I guess I should preface it. Like I will always tip for good service, just like you and an and expected 20% for doing nothing. I, I don't think is right but if if you you do your if you can be, do your basic job like you said keep my water filled then then you've earned that 20 percent. i feel yeah what was nice is going to to iceland recently and then even london last year was tip is not not a thing over there right it's already included in the price so just pay it and you're out of there and but stinking americans go over there and want to showboat and add extra 15 20 percent kind of ruin, ruin it for, for everyone yeah, yeah. Yeah, now it's expected. So, so I've I've never worked in the the service industry, Glenn. But Daniel Tosh has a a joke about being a, a server, and he wants to open up his own business called "Thank You for Calling." How may I help you? And anyways, <laughs> I'll, I'll, we can put in the, in the show notes. But he goes, if you haven't worked in service, then he's like, you don't understand how unimportant your ranch dressing really is. Do you agree <laughs> with that? How unimportant your ranch. Yeah, I guess I could. Re I, uh, I guess so. But so here's here's my thing, right? Like, uh, as a bartender, you kind of sit there and you're like, "Hey, there are a couple things. You know, those that will tip and those that don't tip that 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 don't, right?" So I had my regulars at the bar, and you know, as part of customer service, if I knew they, you know, they were coming in and they had a beer, it's the same beer every time I see them for the last thirty days. Guess what? I open for them. When they first walk into the place, I give them the beer. There's no discussion. It's not talking. There's. It's just like, hey, I've got a line of people. I'm gonna, and you sit up at the bar. You belly up to the bar. I'm gonna give you your beer because guess what you've ordered for the last thirty days consecutively, right? And and when you when you when you do that, you earn their their respect, and the service goes there. And guess what? You get a nicer tip. I've worked at nightclubs as a bartender as well, where. You get people that you know don't uh, tip very well, and so guess what? You're 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 maybe light Back on the, the line. <laughs> you're on. You're at the lighter side of the poor, as well as they're You're not going to service them as nice when uh, when you go to the bar. So uh, you know, one of the things I like to do, and it's not being flashy, especially if I know I'm going to be there all night, is I take a twenty and I look at them and I shove a twenty right across the across the bar, or I put it in their tip jar and I look at them and go. Are we going to be okay for the rest of the night? And typically, it's a great night because no matter where I am at the bar, my 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 drink is always next when I when I pull up. Aside from everyone else, that person is waiting on. I've seen Glenn do that, and it is very effective. Absolutely. 
he was very proud of himself too when he did that. And then I was like, well, you know, I'm only here for like one drink. So. <laughs> you suck. That's what I was saying. You suck, Brian. <laughs> All right, my last comment that we'll wrap this up is uh, Glenn brings up a good point. There's a really good book. It's called Setting the Table by Danny Mayer, and he he started like Shake Shack and a couple other restaurants in New York, and he speaks specifically. There's there's a difference between service and hospitality. So service is I order a drink, you bring me my drink. Hospitality is I walk into the restaurant, they address me by name, they bring me my favorite dish, they take me to my favorite table. Like that's hospitality, and I think that's worth going above and beyond for absolutely hey so did that guy that you were serving 30 days non-stop did you guys acknowledge his alcohol problem or anything like that like uh, <laughs> his, his liver this protruding from his body no no he, he'd come in and he'd have his you know two to four beers and you know he, he he'd buy it and he'd just walk back like he'd, he'd leave like he'd be done it was a happy hour thing right like he'd be in there like four or four thirty and he would leave by six it was a thing he did every day before he went home it was his way of unwinding so yeah Gotta beers were only 90 cents beers so don't beat my wife well t- t- check this out i mean it was it was a 90 cents beer for happy hour at that time and we're talking like 20 years ago now right and he would give me two bucks uh, he'd if for every beer he'd buy like i said four to six beers it'd be like 10 to 12 bucks uh, and for him it was happy hour so it was, it was like half the price of what he would normally pay anyway right so he was happy to give me his 10 to 12 bucks every so day you don't think that and it that's, was awesome. that's odd behavior is for to is that many drinks a night weird or no I think no, I, you know what, it's, it, it may be a little excessive, but you know what, it's not like, you know, sticking your hand in the back of your mouth and like flossing your teeth with your hand or anything like that. But yeah. True. That is very true. Or stealing someone's bacon. Sandwich. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and not, and not, 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 it's not just, just saying, Hey, apologize. It's like, Hey man, I owe you something. So like the next time I see you, I'd, I'd probably get you like a, a Chick-fil-A, like a gift card or something like that. It's all relative, Brian, because like Andre the Giant drinking four beers a night, that's nothing for him. Big dude, too. So. I don't know, man. I don't know. What would you Wait. say? Would it be any different if he drank like wine every day? Maybe beer is an antioxidant. I don't know. I mean, I guess I don't know. To, for someone that drinks very rarely, it's, just, it's like. If Wait you drink a minute. Every, your drug, although it's not a controlled substance, is Monster. How much do you, how much Monster do you pound per day? Rockstar, get zero because right. I drink Monster. <laughs> okay, or Rockstar, or Rockstar, whatever the heck it is, right? You have a vice. Uh, here's the thing. Except my vice is different. Like when we when they thought the caffeine was jacking with my heart, I stopped for like eighteen months. Okay. Okay. And it was no big deal, right? Like, I, I don't have, like, an addictive personality, so, yeah. for whatever yeah. reason. Or if I do, I don't know what that addiction is yet. Maybe sure. it's just driving the car a little too fast. Or having <laughs> your car take you to the car wash. Yeah. <laughs> well, we continue to get great comments about our dad joke of the week. Dad joke of the week. This week, I'm up. In my career as a lumberjack, I've cut exactly 2,324 trees. Every time I chop one down, I keep a log. (laughs) Wah, wah, wah. I was really hoping there's a play on the number here. I wrote it down. 2,324. Man, you would be jacked if you actually chopped down that many trees, like with an axe. Yeah, that's true. Here's one for you. Here's a riddle, and maybe we can get one of the audience to say it. You can't Google this, right? Person's born in 1975, lives 22 years, and dies in 1975. We'll leave it at that. Answer next week. How many years? you got to tune in next week. How many years were they alive? 22 years. Okay. But they die in 1975? That's right. Hmm. All right. I think it's a time machine. Nope, not a time machine. Don't Google it. You can't Google it. You can't ask AI. You got to solve this on your own. It's a Y2K bug. (laughs) (laughs) All right, to wrap things Uh, up. No. All right, right, to wrap things up. Text message scams cost us $330 million a year. So when in doubt, throw it out. 
Apple continues to improve security and privacy. Kaspersky made the equivalent of a flip phone. And tipping culture is out of control in the U.S. That's all we have for this week. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode. You can find us all on LinkedIn. Links will be in the description. Follow us on Instagram at Pebcag Podcast. Thank to all our listeners and subscribers who rated us five stars in the iTunes store and Spotify and left us a review. We appreciate you all spreading the word to help grow the show. The best way to find us is to search for the Pebcag Podcast on your favorite podcast listening app. For my co-host Brian Deach and Glenn Medina, I'm Chris Louie. Thanks for listening. We'll see you all next weekend. As always, have a nice day. Bye, Felicia. Happy birthday, America. I love you. Hyundai. Woo-woo. Ugh. And I watch. Uh,